alkene in the presence of acidified catalyst. So suppose this is your C double bond C it's alkene. It's a symmetrical alkene for our information, right? What would it would what it would be? Suppose all would be substituted with hydrogen. It would be ethane, correct? Yes. If all bonds would be substituted with hydrogen, that would be ethane. Yes or no? Now here, if you hydrated it in a presence of acid catalyst, right? You will get what? This H two O would be divided into two group H and OH. Correct? It would be positive. It would yeah, be negative. right. So hydrogen would go uh, one of the carbon and OH group also would go one of the carbon, right? To satisfy its valency and convert it into hydrocarbon uh, with the alcoholic OH group. So you will get this. Double bond will break. One of the carbon will be attached to hydrogen. Another carbon will be attached to OH group. And whatever substituent would be present that you need to write. Right? So, this so you get ethanol. This would be what alcohol, general. If it would be ethane, you will get here ethanol, right? It's a general reaction. If it is, yeah. if it is ethane, you will get the product as what? Ethanol. Ethanol. Okay, fine. Now, very important thing we have to keep it in our mind about the asymmetric alkene. This is a symmetric alkene, right? Yes. What yeah. will happen to the asymmetric alkene that we need to check? Correct. So, example for that would be CH3, CH, double bond, CH2, right? It's an asymmetric alkene. The uh, OH group will be added on uh, CH because since it has less number of hydrogens. Yes. So, same reaction you have to carry it out. Okay. Where is propanol? Uh, propan to all. Yeah, you will get two products in this case. But then one would be major, another would be minor. Correct? Yeah. You will get CH3, CH, CH2. So at the uh, CH2, it will go H. And with CH, there would be OH. Correct? Yeah, this is the major product. It would be major product. And another one would be where CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. That would be minor product. Correct? It is primary and this is secondary alcohol. Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this you need to keep it in your mind. I have to explain the mechanism. How does it happen? No, I we have learned it long ago. Okay. Shall I raise it? Yes, ma'am. So um, basically in this case, what happened? Your means like H2O is there. Acidified H2O, it take the H plus. It will convert into H3O, right? Oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And this also attached to the hydrogen. Correct? And here it would be the lone pair with positive charge. Why? Because lone pair is utilized to form the bond with this hydrogen. Isn't it? Yeah? And yeah. If double bond would be there. It will attack on this positively charged hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen, right? So it will be attack on this hydrogen and this lone pair would be shifted on the oxygen to neutralize this positive charge. Fine? Yes. Yes. Later you will get what? This one. And these all processes are reversible, okay? Your hydrogen would come over here. These are the bond already exist on the carbon. This carbon due to the loss of double bond, it become electropositive, right? And now when it reacted with H2O, right? This O would be attack over here. Understanding? Yes? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. And later that H plus would be loss. Understanding? Ma'am, I have a doubt. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if, it, if it's a reversible process, right, the whole thing, then like wouldn't it be changing simultaneously from one form to other? So how will we obtain like the stable alcohol? Like uh, in this case, what happened? All steps won't be reversible. Okay. The first okay, like one or two will be reversible, another all of like irreversible. Irreversible, right? And hence, because of that, in any chemical reaction, 
we won't get a 100% of the yield. Have you ever seen that 100% product has been formed? No, most of it, like some of it is lost in energy or in other uh, byproducts. So that all things are due to reversible process because we won't get your initial first step, second step, third step. Your uh, complete product will not be formed due to reversible process. And whatever amount of the product would be formed, that amount only would be reacted in your next step and that much amount of the product only would be formed. Understand? Oh, yeah. That's all about, means like this reversible process will be completely impact on a yield of reaction. Okay, reaction may process, you may get the product, but the quantity of the product would be less. Understand? Due to yes, reversible. Sir. Clear? Yeah, got it. Yeah. And the lastly, what happened when this um, like oxygen would be attached over here, uh, you will get this simply. Hydrogen is already here. O, H and H. As oxygen again attack over here, it becomes positively charged and to reduce this positive charge, hydrogen will be lost. Another H2O molecule will be take this hydrogen you will get your alcohol. That's it. Right? This is alcohol. Yes, but then attack will happen here or here. It will be decided by the whether it is primary or secondary. If your hydrogen peroxide is not used, that time your Markovnikov product will be the major product. And when hydrogen peroxide would be used, that time primary product would be major product. Okay? Here? Yes, sir. Fine. Now the next step in this what? Preparation of alcohol. By using hydroboration oxidation. Oxidation means what? Hmm? You might have learned in your grade uh, Loss of electrons or addition of uh, oxygen. Addition of oxygen or loss of electrons. There are the three conditions for the oxidation, right? Addition of oxygen. Loss of hydrogen. And loss of, yeah. loss of electron. Yeah, loss of electron. So these three conditions need to be followed if oxidation has to perform. So here they said hydroboration oxidation. Means first of all, you have to like undergo the hydroboration first by the alkene. Alkene's hydroboration you have to perform. Once hydroboration is done, you have to do its oxidation. Fine. For that reason, what things you need? By hydroboration oxidation, in that you have to use Who's a diborane? What is a diborane? What is the formula for diborane? Diborane is represented as BH3 twice. This is called as what? Diborane. It reacts with alkenes to give a trialkyl borins. When it reacts with alkene, what it will give you? What it will give you? Trialkyl borins. And after the oxidation, this borane would be complete converted into OH group. Understand? When we perform the oxidation, what happened? It will be converted into OH. And your uh, aqueous sodium hydroxide need to be used for this process. Okay? Aqueous sodium hydroxide need to be used in this process. First of all, what you're going to do? You have to take an alkene. Add this BH3 thrice, you will get here what? Trialkyl borane, right? This is a general reaction. Correct? This is addition product. Now you have to oxidize it. Okay, how? 
you have to oxidize it into alcohol. How are you going to oxidize it into alcohol? By using hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, right? In presence of, in presence of aqueous sodium hydroxide, NMH. So this reagent you need to use to perform this reaction. What you're going to do? Alkene treated with diborane, converted into trialkyl borane as an addition product. When trialkyl borane undergo oxidation in the presence of uh, hydrogen peroxide and aqueous NaOH, it will convert it into alcohol. Clear? Yes, ma'am. So, shall we see the examples for this? Sure, ma'am. Now, see the first example would be CH3, CH double bond, CH3. Okay. This we are going to treat with what? BH3 thrice. BH3 twice. But then what we are going to do? We are just going to break it. H, BH2. Correct? This is nothing but BH3. And that would be two times. Means it is what? Diborin. Clear? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. So in this case, what we are going to, what, what we are going to do? We are going to means let's show the addition reaction for this. In the same manner, how we have performed in the previous one. Means hydrogen will be go in one of the carbon and BH2 group will go into the one of the carbon. Understand how we have added the OH group already uh, earlier in the same way we are going to do that. Right? Yes? Okay, understood or not? Yeah. yeah. Now what are you going to do? Your, you will get CH3, CH, CH2. And each one of it will get a yeah. uh, yeah. BH2. Yeah. This in which we have break H and BH2, that just will be go and add over here. Clear? So, uh, like it's diborane. So, yes. we'll, we'll use two moles of uh, that, whatever alkane we are using. Yeah, yeah. I uh, know very well what you want to ask me because uh, you might have a mind, uh, mindset like, ma'am, we have taken here two moles, right? Yes, yeah. we have added only BH and H. Furthermore, one more alkene you are going to add in the same manner. In this okay, way. so step, uh, reaction, like we'll be adding as it, the reaction yes. goes forward. Yes. Like, it's a yes. So one more hydro, uh, like uh, alkene hydrocarbon we are going to add over here and you will get in this manner. So yes. is it have to be the same alkene or it can be a different one? Same thing. Same way it will be added. No, like alkene, like uh, we can use the same one or we can use uh, any different? Same one mostly we are going to use. Okay. If you want your particular alcohol. But then if you don't have a boundaries like that, any alcohol you can make, that time you, you can use any of the alkene. So if and we want a, like a singular yield, we're, we're going to use the same uh, alkene. If we want a multiple yield, we, we, we can use different. Got it? Understood? Yeah. yeah. Now, earlier, what we have used in here, diborane, right? One BH3 molecule would be left as it is. Here, though, we have used uh, two uh, diamonds, like diborane means one borane would be left as it is. BH3 would be remain as it is, correct? Only one yeah. used. So, how many hydrogens are there in this BH3? After attacking one alkene, two are remain. So, this one would be used, and here, what now again? This would be two times and it is attached to only BH. You can add one more alkene to remove this hydrogen as well. Right? That would be what? CH3, CH, double bond, CH2. And you will get the product what? CH3, CH, CH2. Instead of now twice, it would be thrice and B. Understanding? What we have done? Just we have eating this hydrogen present here in a BH3 group. Understand? One BH3 group yeah. is and each and every hydrogen we are replacing with one of the alkene group. Isn't it? Correct? And now you're going to hydrolyze it. Now you're going to do what? Mom, shouldn't it be CH3, CH2, CH2? Ah, CH2, CH2. I'm sorry. Correct. Yeah? Yeah. So we are uh, like removing one H from BH2, which is 
uh, added to the compound and uh, we are replacing that H with the same alkene. Yes. Understood? Yeah, ma'am. Now, uh, you are going to use the hydrogen peroxide for the hydrogen, sorry, for the oxidation. Okay. And aqueous, any way you're going to do. So, what happened? Instead of this BH, there would be OH would be attached. How many three OH would be required, right? So, you'll get your product CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. Right? Where your OH would be attached, where your boron, where the boron, boron, the carbon, your boron is present, there your hydroxyl group will be attached. Right? So, your primary product is the major product in this case. And this boron will take how many here are the three alkenes? So, three, oxy, uh, three OH group it will take and you will get hydroxyl boron. Okay. B, OH. But then how many OH? Three OH. Because three alkenes has been, three alkenes would be removed from that yeah. boron. Isn't it? So this is your basic reaction means by ox uh, hydroboration, oxidation of alkene, you will get the alcohol. In the first case, what happened? Your alkene would be attached to the diborane. It will, will give you a trialkyl borane compound. Okay. You have to replace each and every hydrogen stepwise by adding uh, one and one uh, means repetitive alkene member in that. Okay. And after that, you have to hydrolyze it by using um, hydrogen peroxide and the aqueous NaOH. You will get your alcohol as a product. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. So in this case, what is the difference in our previous reaction and to now this reaction? And this is what happened. Whenever we perform this addition reaction, our borane group, uh, will be attached to the double bond to the sp2 carbon instead of sp3 carbon. Understand means it will attach to the primary carbon instead of secondary or tertiary. Isn't it? And hence the alcohol is formed. It's like mostly uh, primary. Isn't it? It will your product would be the opposite to Markovnikov's rule. Yeah. So we can basically say in the previous one we were using Markovnikov's rule, and in this one we're using anti-Markovnikov's rule. Anti-Markovnikov's rule. Understanding, and even this is one of the major. Yeah. We are using hydrogen peroxide. Already we yeah. have discussed about it. When hydrogen peroxide would be there, your anti-Markovnikov's rule more, isn't it? Yep. You will get your primary product as a better yield as compared to your secondary. Clear? Yeah, ma'am, got it. Shall I erase it now? Yes, ma'am. And the next way, preparation of alcohol by using carbonyl compounds. Now you tell me what are the carbonyl compounds? Mm -hmm. Carbonyl compounds means what? At the uh, R C O R group. Mm -hmm. Group, special C double bond O group in any of the functional group, those functional yeah. group are carbonyl groups, correct? R C double bond R. In that case, it will be C double bond O H or R C double bond O R. That R R R and R dash may be same or different, correct? Another one is what? R C double bond O O H. This is acid, right? And R C double bond O. O R. This is ester, correct? Yes. No. This is what aldehyde, ketone, pure acid, carboxylic acid, and this would be ester. Yeah. Yes yeah. or no? These are what? They are carbonyl groups. 
these are carbonyl groups right so these carbonyl groups are really very important and by this we are able to prepare the alcohols okay so first thing by reduction of aldehydes and ketones we are able to prepare the alcohol these aldehyde and ketones when you reduce you will get what alcohol okay see how you know in this what happened when uh, we reduce the ketones and aldehydes we will get the corresponding alcohols by the addition of hydrogen in a presence of catalyst this is called as catalytic hydrogenation when you add the hydrogen see addition of hydrogen in presence of catalyst in presence of catalyst is called as what catalytic hydrogenation catalytic hydrogenation hydrogenation means what addition of hydrogen in presence so of so on this one we are breaking the double bond between carbon and oxygen and adding h plus ion in which which we are going to add the oil yeah. hydrogen would be added in that it is reduction right and reduction means what addition of hydrogen removal of oxygen yeah. or gain of electron among these three any one of process would happen that is called as what reduction it's completely opposite to oxidation correct oxidation yes so here you have to add a hydrogen in a presence of catalyst and hence it is called as catalytic hydrogenation okay so usual catalyst which we use um that is finely divided metals such as the palladium or platinum or nickel which catalyst we use palladium palladium platinum or nickel nickel these three catalyst mostly we use okay it is also prepared by okay this is also um, prepared by treating aldehyde and ketones with sodium borohydride and the lithium aluminum hydride now sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride means what sodium borohydride is nabh4 okay and lithium aluminum hydride is lialh4 so in that you can see sodium is what metal here lithium is also metal this is a um, this is also a reducing agent this is also re reducing agent but then in this case nabh4 is a selective reagent in which we are able to convert the aldehyde into primary alcohol okay and lialh4 it can be reduced any of the carbonyl group any carbonyl group can be reduced okay but then nabh4 is quite selective it will stop the reaction at particular is only for nabh4 is only for no it's not like only for aldehydes it can be reduced ketone as well but then if you use a nabh4 but it will only stop the reaction at the place of aldehyde aldehydic stage aldehyde can be converted into your primary alcohol understanding yeah you will get the primary alcohol as a product in this case then lialh4 it's not a selective reagent it can be reduced every carbonyl group nabh4 also can be reduced but then uh, lialh4 is very powerful as compared to nabh4 okay oh. it is very powerful reagent nala lialh4 lithium aluminum lithium aluminum hydro uh, sorry sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride lithium aluminum is more powerful aldehyde yield as a primary alcohol whereas ketone gives you secondary alcohol when you uh, reduce it right when we are uh, when there is a aldehyde we use anti markovnikov rule basically and when there is a ketone we use markovnikov rule no no it's not like that it's depending upon the position i'll let you know wait but like what if the ketone is like in this case you are going to add only hydrogen there won't be any another bulky group with the hydrogen isn't it add it let's find the, what if the ketone is asymmetric ha if it is asymmetric that time you have to think about it 
Till the time it is symmetric, that time you need not do. Okay. It's a palladium as a metal, correct? Yeah. Adding, uh, this is a metal. This is a hydrogen. You're adding with a high, uh, like aldehyde. When aldehyde is there, it will be undergo reduction and it convert into your primary alcohol. Means R C H two O H. Means what you have done? One hydrogen is gone here and one hydrogen with the oxygen. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And when there would be the ketone, generally R C O R dash. In this case, what happened? Any of the reagents. Suppose here I have used NaBH four. It's a less powerful. But then to what happened? Here is R C H. Yeah, R C H one hundred. R dash. R dash. And the secondary carbon will be attached to OH. Yeah. Means if you have a aldehyde, it will convert into primary alcohol. If you have ketone, it will convert it into secondary alcohol. Here, yeah? this is basic thing. Yes. Yeah, this is all about reduction of aldehyde and ketone. Now, we can reduce the carboxylic acids as well and even the esters, right? The, those are also carbonyl compounds I have told you earlier. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so if I use the acid RCOOH to reduce acid, I need a strong agent, strong uh, oxidizing, reducing agent. And that purpose I'm going to use LiAlH4. I already told you lithium aluminum hydride would be the strong reagent. And at the same time, I have to hydrolyze as well. So what happened? By reduction of carbonyl acids and ester, by using the lithium aluminum hydride, it is a strong reducing agent and it will be reduced it into your primary alcohol, right? What you'll get here are CH2OH because this OH would be remain as it is, but then here you, this carbonyl group, you need to completely convert into CH2 group. Understanding? Yes, sir. Yeah, means you have to keep it in your mind. Number of carbon should not be changed. Getting? Number of carbon yeah. change No, it is remain as it is. Okay? Fine. However, what is gained, uh, what is given to you? Lithium aluminum hydride is an expensive reagent. And because of that, we use for preparing special chemicals only, uh, commercially. And because of that, acids are reduced to alcohols by converting them to the ester. What we do? We convert them into ester. First of all, whatever acids are given, right? Acid can be converted into your alcohol by using lithium aluminum hydride in presence of water. <laughs> but then what we know, lithium aluminum hydride is expensive only. Okay. And it is not affordable to use this reagent to convert the uh, carboxylic acid into their alcohols. And hence what we do, first of all, these is the acids we convert into ester and ester has been reduced by using hydrogen in the presence of catalyst. Means we undergo the catalytic hydrogenation of ester instead of using this lithium aluminum hydride. Clear? So in that case, what we do? First of all, your RCOOH. What is this acid? Correct? It need to be converted into ester. ROH. You have to take and you have to convert it into you have to convert it into what? Easter. C O O R dash. Correct? C double bond O till that it will be same. This O H would be removed and this O R will be attached. Correct? So it convert yeah. into Easter. Right? Now this Easter, when you undergo the catalytic hydrogenation H2 in presence of catalyst, what you will get? What you will get? R CH2 OH. OH. R CH2 OH plus R OH. Correct? Here so we are two byproducts. Like we are getting two products. Yes. Two alcohol products, right? So what happened? It will be get divided over here. One hydrogen means uh, hydrogenation would be happen here, CH2 OH, and here also H. Understanding? The number so of hydrogen. So which one will be major or like is it both of them are in equal yield or one is major and one is minor? Equal yield it must be because they have not given you as a major and minor in this case. 
but then yes bulkiest would be less as compared to the prime prime both are primary i guess right yeah both, both of them are primary. primary yeah both are primary so they didn't ask you to follow any marco nikovs or sets of rule over here you just have to make the products okay so it just depends on the r group like yes r if, group yes. yeah and uh, mostly bulky uh, groups will not be exist much longer a period of time because there would be steric hindrance and all. So that product would be less as compared to the minor one. It's like, which is I have group. a doubt. What if both the R groups are like same groups? You know? Then like, same alcohol would be formed. No? So there is 50 two different products. So there would be a 50 50 percent deal. Yes, 100 percent. Like ethanol plus methanol. Yes. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Any other question? No, that's it. Okay. Now the next way, preparation of alcohol by using the Grignard reagent. So do you know a word about the Grignard reagent? Already I have explained, I guess, about the Grignard reagent. Shall I write here one example for the Grignard reagent? Generally, it is represented at R, M, G, X. This is negative charge and this is positive charge. It's M, G, R or M, G, X. Okay, yeah. R, M, G, X. Yes. So, X is what? Halogen, correct? Halogen and R is carbon group. Any carbon group. Means like hydrocarbon group, right? And Mg is nothing but a metal, and ma magnesium is a electropositive in nature, so it always electropositive with high electropositive nature. And because of that, what happened? Electron is recite towards the R group, right? And hence, R group would become a electronegative in this case. And this is the only even I think copper alcohol halide and this Grignard reagent. Only these two reagent in which your R group would be in a negative charge. Otherwise, in rest all cases, R would be positive. Correct? Yes or no? Yes. So, from Grignard reagent, how are you going to prepare the alcohol? In that case, what are you going to do? Alcohols are produced by the reaction of Grignard reagent, right, with aldehydes and ketones. So, in this case, what happened in a first step, reaction is nucleophilic addition of Grignard reagent to the carbonyl group to form an adduct. We, you will get the adduct. And when you hydrolyze this adduct, you will get the alcohol. For example, suppose generally this is your carbonyl group, C double bond O. If it would be reacted with R, Mg, X. As we know that this is negative charge, this is positive charge. What happened with the negative charge? It will attack on this carbonyl carbon. Right? And this double bond would be shifted onto oxygen. Clear? Yeah, ma'am. Now you will get the adduct how this carbon, the single single bond as it is, here it will be the oxygen, right? And your R group would be attack over here, so R need to be shown here, right? And this O minus will go with the Mg, O minus, and it becomes Mg X as a plus charge. This would be nothing but what? Adduct. And when you hydrolyze this adduct, you will get your alcohol. So the hydrolysis, what you're supposed to do, you have to add what? Water molecule. Isn't it? Yeah. And when you add the water, you will get the product as C. These two bonds. Here it will be R group. O, H. Correct? Plus. Your Mg is attached to your one of the X and this O minus is there that is also attached to hydrogen you'll get OH. That's it. So this is your byproduct and this is your main product which is alcohol. Clear? Yes ma'am. So whenever there would be the methanol, that time methanol means uh, what we can say acetaldehyde. 
that time your uh, product would be the primary alcohol and with other ketones and aldehydes it would be secondary or tertiary okay yes so shall i give you two three examples can you like write down the mechanism for that in the same way ma'am just and i'll note down this one please do it Yeah, ma'am. Done. Now we are going to see. I mean, so I'm going to give you the reactions. You just have to write down the products for them. H C H O R M G X. What would be the product? Or again, H two O. What would be the product? This is your first reaction. Second, R H O plus R M G X. What would be the product? Or H two O. What would be the product? Right. Mama is the first one. Like the first product is R C H O M G X. Then when we add water, we'll get R C H O H. Okay. Take it. Uh, whatever I'm writing, that only you're getting a word. In this case, what happened? This would be C H. H and double bond O, correct? Yes, ma'am. Right. So in this, what happened? This R minus M G X. So this R would be attached over here, and O would come here. You'll get the adduct. C O H H, and here it will be R, right? Oh, uh, and yeah. We attach to M G X, and when you hydrolyze it, H two O. It will convert it to R O H. Yes, H two R, and this will be O H. This will be your product. Yeah, I got the same. H two O H, right? R H two O H. This will be your product. And it's primary. Primary hmm? alcohol. Yeah. And other case. Next one. It is a C H R two O H. Only what happened in this case? This C O H as it is. Right, there would be the R, one more R and one H. O. H. Correct. And it's secondary. R. R. C H. Attached to one more R, and here it will be O H. So that would be secondary alcohol. Correct. So difference is only with the substituent. Reaction would be same. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Can you write down that reaction properly by yourself? Yeah, ma'am, I've done it. Fine. Now uh, we are going to see the preparation of phenols. Shall I raise it? Ma'am, till when is the class? Sorry. Ma'am, till when is the class? Like ph physics, who wants to take the class? Like after this class? Physics is going to take today. Yeah, like you wanted to take. You just asked, like, when is the class complete? Is gonna complete? So how long is going to take? Because I told you I'm gonna extend the class. I told you, no, morning only itself that I'm gonna extend the class. Yeah, ma'am. He told me. Uh, yeah, ma'am. I've said him. He just asked, like, till when is she gonna take? So that yesterday's, the day before yesterday's class, he want to compensate her. So the the class will be till. 9:30 or 9:45. Just 
just want to confirm it. Yeah. You can you confirm it and let me know. I'm waiting here. Ma'am, he said he's fine with 10 a.m. Sorry? Ma'am, I asked him if he can take the class to like at 10 a.m. He said it's fine. At, at 10 a.m. is going to take, right? Yeah. So, shall I continue? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Now we are going to see the preparation of phenols, okay? Where I was. Yeah. Preparation of phenols. So, uh, preparation of phenols, we are going to see. Uh, like phenol is also called as what? Carbolic acid. What is the another name for phenol? It is also called as carbolic acid. Please write down somewhere. Important. Okay. Now, how to prepare it? We can prepare it from haloarenes, from benzyl sulfonic acid, from diazonium salt, from cumin. So whatever things we have learned in your uh, halo alkane chapter, halo alkane and halo arane, those all things we have to use to prepare the phenols. Correct? You have seen the cumin, you have seen the diazonium salt, you have seen the benzosulfonic acid as an electrosubstitutive reaction with the oleum, right? Or the uh, sulfuric acid and even the halo arenes. Isn't it? Yes? Yes, ma'am. So those all reactants we have to use for the preparation of phenols. How are we going to do that? That one by one we are going to check. First one is from haloarenes. Now haloarenes structure, I need not to tell you. This is your benzene ring, alternate double bond. And one of the like hydrogen would be replaced with halogen. Correct? This is your haloarene. Right? So whenever your haloarane, mostly the chlorobenzene, when it is fused with sodium hydroxide at 623 Kelvin temperature, okay, and 323 Kelvin temperature and 320 atmospheric pressure, what happened? Phenol is obtained by acidification of sodium phenoxide. So you will get the phenol. Means basically, when you take your haloarane, is chlorobenzene Cl treated with any wedge at 623 Kelvin temperature and 320 or 300 uh, atmospheric pressure. Okay, you will get your sodium phenoxide derivative. Means here ONA will be attached to your at the place of Cl. This is your sodium phenoxide derivative, O minus Na plus. Sodium phenoxide derivative. And when you hydrolyze it, by using HCl or H2O, you will get your phenol.
single bonded wood beam. I have made it dark, then that's a single beam. So by using halogens, you are able to prepare the phenol. Okay. So then for that reason, you have to maintain certain conditions. It's a nucleophilic substitution. And as we know that with chlorobenzene or halogens, nucleophilic substitution is possible in a drastic condition. And those drastic condition would be a temperature and pressure. So at high temperature and high pressure, you have to react NaOH with the haloarenes. It will be convert into your sodium phenoxide derivative. And when you hydrolyze it, it convert into phenol. Right? Are you there, Aditi? Yeah, yeah please write down. Yeah, ma'am, I'm noting it down. Done? Just a moment. Yeah, the next, the next ma'am, I have, have a doubt. Please ask. Ma'am, what if uh, on, like, on the benzene ring, there are more than two, like more than one halogen? Uh, that time you will get the halo derivatives. No? Immediately, means the, all the reactions, which one would be the most reactive? That only would be react. And suppose okay. para position would be there. Only one substituent would be happen first. And once it would be done and uh, reaction will not be stopped at the first step, then uh, number of steps would be followed. Means like that phenol, phenol group would be attached to another halogen as well. Hello phenol you will get. And uh, once reaction stops, mono derivative, a mono halogen derivative phenol you will get. If it won't stop, then uh, you will get the uh, diol and triols. Diol and triol, uh, you are aware or not? Means phenol uh, OH group would be attached two times or three times to the benzene ring. Yes, ma'am. Classification we have learned. Isn't it? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. So, shall I erase this? Sure, ma'am. In the next one, from benzosulfonic acid, how you are going to convert it into alcohol? Benzo sulfonic acid. So, what is the benzosulfonic acid structure? You know that in a electrophilic substitution, we have learned when benzene undergo electrophilic substitution with polyum. Right? You will get what? SO3H. What is the structure of polyum? Can you tell me? Are you aware? What is oleum? No, ma'am. Oleum is a two molecules of H2SO4 club together. Okay. I'll give you the structure of oleum because that is also quite important. That will be H2, S2, O7. Generally, H2SO4 we say is huh? So H2SO4 plus H2SO4 is nothing but oleum. Means when these two molecules will be club, one oxygen would be reduced. It become H2S2O7. Understood? Means instead of O8, it would be O7. Just keep it in your mind. It is addition of two sulfuric acid group. Just you have to remove one oxygen among them. Clear? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this is the formula for oleum. So whenever oleum is used or sulfuric acid has been used, you, you will get the sulfonic acid derivative of benzene. Is that the O8 instead of O7? O? It should be H2S2O8. No, no, it won't be O8. Oleum formula would be O7 only. One oxygen is less than, uh, means when you club the two uh, uh, H2SO4 group, that time one oxygen needs to be removed. Then only it will convert into oleum. That, this is a formula for oleum. 
but then to keep it in your mind i told you just you have to add up to uh, h2so4 molecule and you have to remove an oxygen among them yeah okay fine now if you have two molecules of h2so4 then it shouldn't be h4s2o7 yeah i know it shouldn't be h2s2o7 it should it's be o8 but then actual oh, formula is o7 it's depending on the balances oxidation Ma state and balances ma'am it should be h4 right because we are adding 2h2so4 beta how h2so4 one h2so4 here also h2so4 no you wrote it as h2 right in the above like oleum yeah formula. these two hydrogen also we need to remove because we have to balance the valencies as well of the sulfur okay. with the oxidation state yeah got it got it because structure shall i give you the structure of h2so4 preparation no, of H2SO4. i know the structure i know the structure oleum structure you are aware no that's what please write down here is the sulfur okay the sulfur is attached with the two double bond i'll show you because as you are uh, like student for the jwe and neat you should be aware of this Can tell me how many hydrogen, how many sulfur, how many oxygens are there? One, two, H two, S two, one, two. How many oxygen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is H two. H two, seven. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Shall I raise it? Sure, ma'am. Now we are going to see how we have to prepare. Are phenol from this sulfonic acid derivative of benzene. Correct? Yes or no? Yeah. So in this case, what we have to do? Benzene is a sulfo. Uh, be benzene is sulfonated with oleum, and the benzene sulfonic acid has been prepared. So it can be converted into sodium phenoxide on heating it with the molten sodium hydroxide, and acidification will be lead into phenol. Means if you treat it with NaOH, this would be what molten NaOH. Okay, it will give you a phenoxide derivative. Then this O S O three H would be removed with O N A. O minus N A plus. And when you acidified it, it will convert into phenol. In the same way, how it has been happened in the previous example. Clear? Yes, ma'am. This is benzene sulfonic acid. Benzene sulfonic acid. This will be phenoxide derivative. Sodium phenoxide, you can say. And after its acidification, you will get phenol. Done. Yes, ma'am. Now the next one is preparation of phenol by using diazonium salt. Right. 
for diazonium salt, what, what would be your primary or uh, uh, main reagent? That would be amine, right? And that aromatic amine is nothing but aniline. Correct? Aromatic amine. So when diazonium salt is formed by treating the aromatic primary amine with nitrous acid. Nitrous acid, how you have to prepare? You have to treat it with NaNO2 in presence of HCl. Correct? Nitrous acid, NaNO2 plus HCl. You will get HNO2 in short. Correct? They will give you NaNO2 HCl or they may give you HNO2. This is also nitrous acid. HNO3 is a nitric acid, correct? HNO3 is what? Nitric acid. If one oxygen is less, HNO2 is given. This is a nitrous acid. These things you should be aware. Means when NaNO2 and HCl is treated with each other, Na, sorry, this hydrogen and this NO2 will be formed HNO2 and NaCl. So this is nothing but a mixture which will be, give you nitrous acid. And this nitrous acid convert this primary amine group into diazonium salt. Okay? So that diazonium salt would be what? This is the alternate double bond in a benzene. Right? Here it will be N2 and Cl. N2 would be with positive charge and Cl would be with negative charge. This already reaction and mechanism we have seen into the previous chapter. Isn't it? Yes. And when you hydrolyze it with water, with warm water, you will get phenol as a product. Here it will be OH. This nitrogen would be evolved as an N2. Okay, and the Cl will go with the hydrogen of this. You will get NC2. The side product. Understood? Aditi, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Fine. Please note it down. Note down this basic difference in between nitric acid and nitrous acid is there. And this mixture, NaNO2HCl, is nothing but the preparation for this. One more reaction is remained that we will complete and we'll stop. Okay. Like preparation of phenol from cumin. Shall I raise it? Yes, ma'am. Now, first of all, what is cumin? Cumin structure already isopropyl benzene is nothing but what? Cumin. We have learned it in your last chapter. Means here C, H, CH3, and CH3. This structure is called as what? Cumin. Right? Isopropyl benzene is called as cumin. So in this case, what happened? Cumin is oxidized in the presence of air to cumin hydroperoxide. And when it converted into hydroperoxide, okay, when it treated with the acetone, it will be converted in, uh, uh, acetone in the presence of dilute acid, it will be converted into phenol. Okay, that we have to see how it will happen. So this is your cumin. When you oxidize it in presence of oxygen, generally, uh, suppose you have written your arrow and oxidation of this cumin, if you have carried out, you will get hydroperoxide cumin or cumin hydroperoxide. So this is your benzene ring as it is. And hydroperoxide, if you have to create over here, the C, 
CH3, CH3 as it is, that won't be changed at all. But then this hydrogen would be removed and it is attached to two more oxygens, this O2, and it is here hydrogen. Here it becomes cumin hydroperoxide. What happens in this case? This two oxygen has been attached over here and one hydrogen of this will be come over here. It becomes cumin hydroperoxide. Okay. And when you hydrolyze it with the help of water in the presence of diluted acid H+, you will get phenol. OH, right? Plus, what else? This CH3, C, OH. And instead of this here, it will miss. This will be a tag over here, right? And, and it will be formed as a double bond over here. What you will get? C, double bond O, CH3, CH3. What it is? It's a ketone. Correct. You can say acetone. You can tell uh, say it is acetone. One, two, three. Acetone is a common name, and propanone would be your IUPAC name for that. Isn't it? Got it? And yes, ma'am. So what happened in this case? This oxygen will be attacked over here and this double bond can be shipped here. You can say here it will be shipped over here. Either this you shift or this you shift. Your product would be ketones and phenol. Got it? So these are the four reactions by which you are able to prepare phenol. Right? So which methods we have seen? Preparation of phenol by using your... Uh, Hello, arrange by using your uh, sulfonic acid, benzene sulfonic acid, by using cumin, and by using the previous one was that uh, diazonium salt. Correct? So, rest all are almost same, only the last one is quite different because here hydroperoxide you have to form. And apart from that, uh, the difference would be in the halo arrange only because that time you have to keep it in your mind, your uh, temperature and the pressure conditions. Because as it is a nucleophilic substitution, these all are electrophilic substitution. But then others are what? Nucleophilic, like that halo arrange converted into phenol is a nucleophilic substitution. And as it is nucleophilic substitution, drastic condition is required to happen that reaction. And uh, that would be, I think, 623 Kelvin temperature and 320 degree, so 320 atmospheric pressure. So these two conditions only you need to keep it in your mind about that reaction. Rest all are almost same, right? There won't be any temperature condition. Clear? Aditi? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So few questions regarding that I'll post today this chapter, whatever we have learned till the date, uh, try to solve it. Because last time also you did not attend the examination. So don't do that, okay? Shall I end the class now? Okay, ma'am. Yeah, so you will get the half hour break and again you can join for your other class. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Most welcome. Understood or not? 